William the Conqueror had recaptured York from the rebels. Now he wanted to teach them a lesson for defying him. He began a brutal campaign of destruction to crush any further resistance, known as the harrying of the North. Villages and crops were destroyed. It is said 100,000 people were killed. With ruthless efficiency, William the Conqueror had secured obedience in his new kingdom. But it wasn't to last. It would be thrown into chaos by his own children. When William the Conqueror died in 1087, his favorite son succeeded him, King William II, known as William Rufus. But 13 years into his reign, disaster struck. While out hunting, he was killed. William's youngest brother took his place as King Henry I. But there was a problem. At the time, Henry's elder brother, Robert, Duke of Normandy, had been on crusade. When he returned, he was furious that Henry had grabbed the throne. From Normandy, Robert attempted to invade England to claim the crown from his brother. But he failed and returned home. In retaliation, Henry struck back. In a reversal of 1066, he crossed the Channel and invaded Normandy, intent on undermining his brother Robert's rule. His first target was Bayer. This rich and splendid city was one of the jewels of Normandy. Henry was to begin his campaign by unleashing his forces on the city. Bayer was about to feel the wrath of the English army. In the brotherly feud over Normandy, King Henry I set out to make an example of Bayeux, a town still loyal to his brother, Duke Robert. Henry's archers took up position on high ground outside the city and faced an immediate attack by Robert's cavalry patrol. Having deployed their palings, Henry's archers were well protected against the cavalry charge. They defeated the first patrol. As Henry set his sights on burning Bayer, more reinforcements arrived to join his army. Hände! 
approached Bayer and saw that its towering stone walls would not be breached by manpower alone. Henry would need siege equipment and a defensible location to construct them. called for the services of a blacksmith to bolster the siege effort. In 
Ich Eat your work, eh? No, Tulke, fourth ward of Rekas, with Baldenes. Whoa, Aristende. And you were off, eat your gar. Fair and on. That's you, Le Beo Timbran. With a blacksmith on hand, Henry's infantry would soon be ready to construct siege equipment. Henry's presence on the doorstep of Bayeux would not go unanswered, and now his force is braced for an attack by Robert's army. Henry repelled the attack, but he knew that so long as Bayer still stood, the city would not give up the fight. Et 
Spuści Brotheus. Strelborn Jarwa. Strelborn Jarwa. Ije blue kid that. A booga straight for. Yaru Berende new. A yored Yaru. Ije a worker. It is at me no word. Fen, he shall lay the yard. Fourth ward de freke. And your worker. What third faith, eh? Each a willow, he will do. Knippers, I'm a swift. Yeah! Your day is numbered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strelborn. Strelborn and better. They are sweet and they are sharp tender. Yeah, they are in us. They are helpful. Timbratheos. Vin Hester. Ye ye quilla. Alla kenitens ya. Na chali ye. Henry's infantry could now construct battering rams, siege weapons designed to break open fortress walls. It shall be timber. With the power of battering rams, the English army could crack open Bayer's mighty walls.
Bayer's walls had failed, and Henry's men could now storm the city. Robert's garrison made a last stand to defend Bayer, but Henry would show no mercy in cutting them down and burning their city. Yes, 
As Bayer burned and the people fled in terror, King Henry basked in the victory over his brother Duke Robert. But Henry would not stop until all of Normandy was back under the English crown. <laughs> <laughs> 